So in the realm of cancer diagnoses, if you include adults and children, pediatric brain tumors are a very rare entity. But if you narrow down to pediatric oncology, uh, brain tumors are the most common solid tumor that we see in children. It's really second only to leukemia as the most common malignancy. Common symptoms that we often see is patients will develop headaches. Um, they can have vomiting associated with their headaches. Uh, some children will have difficulty with walking or they'll become weak on one side of their body or they can have vision difficulties. But I think the key to understanding when you should bring your child in is the persistence of symptoms. So many children can develop some of those symptoms when they have a viral illness or if they have an infection or if they have an injury. But if you have a specific symptom that continues for days or weeks and it continues to get worse and there's nothing giving a specific explanation for that, that's when you should touch base with your doctor, your pediatrician, and ask if it's something to be concerned about. There are a wide variety of pediatric tumors and what we call it is the different histologies, which means what they look like under the microscope. Some of the more common tumors that we see in pediatrics are medulloblastoma, which many of our patients suffer from, ependymoma, low-grade gliomas, high-grade gliomas, choroid plexus tumors, atypical rhabdoid tumors, uh, and then patients have optic pathway tumors, and there is even more rare tumors that are more specific than that, but those are some of the most common ones we deal with. We see patients here from birth. Some children are even diagnosed, believe it or not, before they're born in utero with a brain tumor, so we know that they have a diagnosis before they are born. That's very rare, but that occurs. And we treat children into their young adulthood, so I have some patients who are 23, 24 years old, and for many reasons. One, because they started with me when they were younger, and I'm continuing to follow them. And sometimes a young adult is diagnosed with a pediatric brain tumor. And since we have the expertise with the pediatric brain tumor, we oversee their care here. Most brain tumors are treated with three modalities. Surgical resection, which is almost, with very few exceptions, very important. And usually when you can get more of the tumor out, it's a better prognosis. The other thing is chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Some children don't need all three of those things. Sometimes you can have your tumor resected and that's all you need done because it's been completely resected and it's a low-grade tumor. Some children will need just chemotherapy um, and they will respond well to chemotherapy. Other children will need just radiation therapy and then as you can imagine, some children will need a combination of the three. And age does play an important piece. Some of our modalities as good as they fight the tumor, they also cause side effects in our children, and so sometimes we try to avoid those side effects. So for example, radiation therapy to the entire brain and spine of a very young child can lead to what we call neurocognitive deficits later in life, meaning they can have memory difficulties, they can have learning disabilities, they can have difficulties even taking care of themselves. So we try to avoid that in very young children and use other alternatives to prevent radiation or delay radiation therapy. If you look all across the board at all brain tumors together, which in a sense is a little bit skewed, you can say 65 to 70 percent of children will have long-term survival. Outcomes really depend on the histology and the specific type of brain tumor a child has. There are some tumors that are low grade and can be resected, and those children have 95 to 100 percent long-term survival and never have problems again. Unfortunately, there are other diagnoses that from the moment I meet a child, I know that we will not be able to cure the brain tumor, and that can be very difficult. But that's really what drives our research and what motivates us to keep pushing forward when we meet these families who have to deal with something that no family should have to deal with.